Hello and welcome to Current Dividers, the second of the two important divider equations. Right, this is a current divider. You'll notice that the title is not in title case with capitals and does not have an exclamation mark. And this is because current dividers are not as important as potential dividers, but they are still worth knowing about. Current divider is, as the name suggests, any point in a circuit where a current divides down into two different currents, both of which go to the same place. In this case, this one amp current here is being divided into a current that goes through this 1K resistor to ground, and another current which is going through this 250 ohm resistor to ground. And the current divider problem is if you have a circuit like this, how do you work out how much of the current goes down through each of these two resistors? Right, well, we can start analysing that. Let's have a look at some simple equations. OK, so if we've got one amp of current flowing in here, and we know that that is going to split into a current flowing through a 1K resistor and another current flowing through, in this case, a 250 ohm resistor, then we can apply Ohm's law to both of these two resistors. Ohm's law applied to this 1K resistor tells us that the voltage here, minus naught, so just the voltage here in this case, is the current that's flowing down through this 1K resistor, I'll call it I1, times 1K. And the current flowing down through this 250 ohm resistor is the voltage across this 250 ohm resistor, V, minus naught, or just V, equals, I'll call this current, I2, I2 times, in this case, 250 ohms. But these two voltages must be the same, because they're the voltage of the same point in the circuit. So we can instantly tell that I1 times 1K must be equal to I2 times 250 ohms. Divide both sides by 250, and you get 4 times I1 equals I2. Now, applying Kirchhoff's current law to this node in the circuit here, the total current flowing into this node is 1 amp. The total currents flowing out of this node are I1 plus I2. So I1 plus I2 must equal 1 amp. So we have two simultaneous equations here. 4I1 equals I2, and I1 plus I2 equals 1 amp. All we have to do is solve those two equations. Simplest way to do that, probably to write something like um, 4I1 equals I2, but I2 would be 1 minus I1, just taking I1 across to this side of the equation. So 4I1 would equal 1 minus I1. Therefore, 5 times I1 must be equal to 1, or I1 equals 1 fifth. 1 fifth of an amp is 200 milliamps. That's I1. And once we've got I1, it's fairly simple just to note from either of these two equations that I2 must be 800 milliamps. And we've solved the problem. We know how much current is flowing down each of these two resistors. Once again, we don't want to have to go through all of this calculation every time we see a circuit like this. So what we'd ideally like is a formula that we can simply apply to a situation like this and which will tell us 
the currents that are flowing down through the resistors. So let's try it again, but this time with some algebra. Let's have an input current I in. In this case, that would be the one amp there. Let's have a two output currents. I'll call this one I1 and this one I2. And these two resistors will just be R1 and R2. So the circuit that I've got is I1 is I in flowing in, getting divided down into two currents. I1, which flows through a resistor R1, and I2, which flows through resistor R2. Okay, now we know that the voltage at this point here, applying Ohm's law to this resistor, must be I1 times R1. And the voltage at this point here, by applying Ohm's law to R2, would just be I2 times R2. And we know that these must be equal because it's the same voltage at the same point in the, in the circuit. Therefore, we have this. We also know from Kirchhoff's current law that I in is I1 plus I2. And these are our two simultaneous equations that we want to solve for, let's say we want to work out I1. If we want to work out I1, we have to eliminate I2 between these two equations. So let's, from this first equation here, note that I2 is I in minus I1, and substitute that into this equation here. That would give us I1 times R1 equals I in minus I1 times R2. Now all we need to do is manipulate this equation to get it into the form I1 equals something. Well, multiply out this bracket. I in times R2 minus I1 times R2. Bring this term here over to this side of the equation. That gives us I1 R1 plus I1 R2 equals I in R2. Extract I1, the common factor of I1, from these two terms. I1 R1 plus R2 equals I in R2. And then just divide by R1 plus R2, giving us the final equation. I1 equals I in R2 over R1 plus R2. That's it. That is the current divider formula. Ways of remembering this, the current through resistor R1 is the total current times the other resistor, R2, divided by the sum of the two resistances. Once again, we can check our formula by trying it out with the example that we have here. This would formula would tell us that the current through this 1K resistor, if this is R1, would be I in, which is one amp, times the other resistor, 250, divided by the sum of the two resistors, which was 1,250. 1,000 plus 250. That would be our I1, the current going down through this 1K resistor. Well, that is just one-fifth, or 200 milliamps, which is exactly what we got before, and is rather easier to do if you know this formula. And it's another formula that's worth learning, so that you can apply it quickly when you need it. We could do an exactly similar derivation and come up with the formula for I2. I2 is the input current times the other resistor, in this case R1, divided by the sum of the two resistances, R1 plus R2. There is one other formula that it's useful to remember about current dividers. 
And that comes directly from this formula up here, where we noted that Ohm's law tells us that the current through R1 times R1 must be equal to the current through R2 times I2, because the same voltage appears across both of those two resistors. And that is to just note that the ratio of the two currents is the inverse ratio of the two resistances. This one. I1 over I, I2 equals R2 over R1. The majority of the current goes through the smaller resistor, but the ratio of the two currents is the inverse of the ratio of the two resistances. OK, that's the most important things about current dividers. Next, time to do a few examples.